I reclaimed over 600 gigabytes of disk space over the past week transcoding my videos using TDAR. Yes, that's gigs with a G. Almost a full terabyte, and I will probably hit that by the time you see this video. TDAR is a distributed transcoding system that allows you to convert your media library to any format you like. It's cross-platform, so it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac, ARM, Docker, and even Unraid. And it even supports GPU transcoding. But don't worry. Even if you don't have a GPU, you can still do transcoding using a CPU. And you can choose GPU or CPU transcoding depending on the node that it's running on. When there's work to be done, it will pick up the job and transcode the files based on the type of worker. And then transcode the file and replace or create the new file depending on your settings. And here's where the real space savings comes into play. Most of my videos are encoded using the H.264 codec. However, the H.265 or HEVC codec is quickly becoming a successor to the H.264. This new standard offers anywhere from 25% to 50% better data compression at the same video quality compared to H.264. But I'm no video expert. I just make YouTube videos and then store them on my NAS. And that's where I started to feel the squeeze from all the videos I've been recording. I have hours and hours of B-roll, A-roll, desktop recordings, and random videos that I've accumulated over the years. Most of which I won't ever touch again, but I wanted just in case. Can you say data hoarder? I've considered deleting some and cleaning it up, but there might be a better way than that. And that's when I found TDAR. First, I needed to rip open one of my servers and make room for a video card. This is my old PC conversion, and it's quickly becoming my testbed for different bare metal systems. I need a better test server because this is actually my backup server and it doesn't really need a video card in it at all. Anyway, I had some old video cards that aren't being used anymore. I feel bad calling these old because they're still more than capable. But I have an NVIDIA 1050, an NVIDIA 1650, and my NVIDIA GTX 1080. At first I thought about using the lowest end, my 1050, and then I thought, what the heck are you thinking? So I put in my NVIDIA GTX 1080 in there and sealed it up and put the server back in the rack. I reconnected all of my cables and powered it back on, ready to convert my video collection. And if you need a new video card or are looking to build a new system, you should totally check out today's sponsor and a huge thanks to Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs and hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. Micro Center is your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and eligible staff that are there to help you out and will point you in the right direction so that you don't attempt to apply thermal paste like this. Also, Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and is available in store only. So see the link in the description. So this server is running Ubuntu server and after the video card was physically installed, I wanted to check to be sure that the drivers were also installed. So I ran Ubuntu-Drivers Devices and it showed my NVIDIA GTX listed there. So then I ran a sudo apt install and the latest drivers from NVIDIA. After that, I rebooted and ran NVIDIA SMI and I saw I had the latest driver and my device was being detected properly. Next, I needed to install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. This toolkit exposes the NVIDIA driver to Docker so that the container can access the video card and TDAR actually supports this too. Super nice. So after I got that installed, I ran a test container to see if I could access the driver from it. And as you can see, here I can. Next was getting TDAR installed and running. And then I added the Docker Compose file. So first, be sure your PUID and PGID is set. This can be found by running ID on your server, and this should be the ID and group that Docker is running as. Next is internal node equals true. This tells TDAR to run the server and a node that will be converting video on the same container. For simplicity, I'm gonna do this now, but I might later move the server to my Kubernetes cluster and leave the node on this server or another machine on my network. Next are the environment variables for NVIDIA. These will need to be set if you are using an NVIDIA video card. The volumes you'll need to tweak to your liking, but I have most of mine in the root directory with the exception of my media directory. This is a mounted share pointing to my YouTube videos that will be converted. And last, the GPU capability. This will need to be set so that Docker can take advantage of your video card. After that, I spun up the container, took a look around and saw it created some log files, checked the Docker logs, and I was up and running. 
Oh, and pro tip too. If you're using Portainer, you can upload your YAML directly to Portainer using their UI. You just create a new stack and then paste the YAML into the web editor, name it, hit deploy. But anyways, now it was time to check out the UI. I could see an overview of my servers as well as my connected node. It's the one called my internal node, <laughs> real creative. This was good news because it was the node that we created along with the server. After that, I went into libraries and gave mine a name. I then set the media path, but remember, that's the path inside of the container. I did click on show browser just to be sure I was seeing the right folder. Next up in transcode options, there were a lot of options that seemed a little overwhelming, but after reading them, I started to figure them out. TDAR uses a priority list in order to determine how to transcode files it finds. By default, the first one, reorder all strings v2, should be left in place as well as the next. But if you look at the third one, it looks like we're going to transcode using the CPU, where the fourth one says transcode using the GPU, and it's disabled. So we'll want to enable GPU transcoding and move it higher in priority than CPU transcoding. This means it will try GPU first, and if it fails, it will fall back to CPU, which may be what you want, although I'm going to remove it altogether because I never want to transcode on my CPU. Next are some options. This looks like TDAR wants you to choose MKV by default, and that's typically a good choice. However, my YouTube videos are MP4, so I'm going to change the container type. The bitrate cutoff will skip a file if the bitrate is lower than what you specify. I'm going to skip this option altogether. The next three options are pretty advanced, but I would recommend keeping these at their default values. Next, I made sure that the health check only had quick set. The thorough option seems unnecessary for my use case. And then after that, I checked out the schedule where I could schedule times of day for transcoding. This seems interesting for the future. However, I'm going to let it transcode any time of the day. I then went back to the library section and started a fresh scan and it started scanning all of the files and folders. It quickly found over 4,000 video files. I knew I had a lot of videos in B-roll, but I had no idea I had this much. Then I found I needed to make another change so that my node would pick up the work. I made sure that the node was able to pick up additional CPU tasks if needed, and to always log error transcodes properly. I think these are the default options. So there's nothing to change there. Then we'll need to adjust how many GPU and CPU transcodes this node can pick up. I'm not doing any CPU transcoding, so I left this to zero, and as far as GPU transcodes, this will depend on your video card. But I have an NVIDIA 1080 GTX, and I tried to set the encodes to four, but then later found out that NVIDIA limits consumer cards to three, so you'll want to tune this though for your own card. After I applied these settings, I could see my nodes start picking up the jobs of videos to transcode, and I wanted to check to see if my GPU was actually doing the work, so I installed NVTOP. I did have some troubles installing the latest version with the latest drivers on my server. However, I quickly found a Docker container that worked. Docker to the rescue. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway, after running NVTOP for a bit, I could see that the GPU was doing its work and the encoders and decoders were almost pegged. And I could see the individual streams that were being used. Here I could see three tasks. This is why I ended up setting up my nodes to only transcode three at a time because NVIDIA limits how many streams you can use on the consumer card to three. Now, I know there are ways around this, but it's not something I wanted to mess with for the time being. And seeing that my encoder and decoder were almost pegged, I wasn't sure if there were any benefits to doing this. Plus, I need to stay focused and not go down another rabbit hole. So I just let it run for a while. And then I got really impatient and it was actually going to take a lot longer than I expected. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> I have a few video cards laying around and I can just add another node to TDAR, so I did just that. I installed the TDAR client on my Windows machine that had an NVIDIA Quadro P2200. I mapped the folder for my videos as well as the folder for temp space. The reason you have to do this is because that the mappings that we set on the server do not match what we have on our node. After configuring that, I started the node and could see it connecting to the server. I checked the dashboard and there it was, my Quadro P2200 node. So now I let this run for a really long time. And then I got impatient again, so I added another node, and this time adding my GTX 3090 into the mix to help crush the workload. So I installed the node on my main machine and configured it with the appropriate node name. It was then ready to take on transcoding jobs, or so I thought. Shortly after, I started getting errors about it not being able to connect to the new node. 
This had to be one thing. No, not DNS this time. It was firewall rules. So if it's not DNS, it's a firewall rule. Okay, so then I fixed that. Now I had three nodes transcoding videos taking on three streams each. I checked out the task manager and saw my GPU was getting crushed, at least on the encoder, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Sorry, GPU. And then I waited a really long time. And then I got too impatient and I... <laughs> no, just kidding. Although I have more video cards, I'm running out of physical machines to install these in. So now I truly just had to wait for it to complete. After letting this run for about four days, it already converted most of my collection. And it's still going. It's hovering right around at 640 gigabytes that I've saved. And by the time this finishes, I'll be sure and post the final results. I hope this shows you how easy it is to convert your media collection to H.265. H.265 is quickly becoming popular, and I feel it's the future of video, if not already. And if you're looking for a quick way to save space, or you just want a more efficient codec, you should totally give TDAR a try and let it convert your media collection for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. If you need anything, I will be on Discord. I might even be in Discord chat tonight, uh, hanging out. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. Uh, uh, hopefully, it's as interesting and as colorful as last week because uh, it was it was good. Good chat in there. I've said like this is the most interesting podcast I've ever heard. And uh, anyways, uh, it was a little little inside joke because I was just listening to the audio. I felt like I was listening to a podcast, but really I was listening to people in our community just talk about and solve problems. And it was like this is great. This is like conversations I, I want to be a part of um, and hopefully you do too.